portraiture is about the why, it's about connecting emotionally and really not just me saying, well, this is my approach, I'm a photographer, I'm gonna photograph everybody a similar way, and that's fine. You attract the kind of style that you put out there, but to be able to give a personal little slant on something, that's what's incredible for me, and that's what I live for, and that's what I'll die for. Hi, I'm Jerry Gionis, Nikon Ambassador, wedding portrait, fashion photographer, and filmmaker. Welcome to my B&H four-part series on portraits. What attracted me to portraiture and why photograph people when there are so many genres out there? Well, I love people. I love connecting with people. And really, portraiture to me is not just what you look like, it's who you are as a person. Now, many of us are multifaceted. So really, as a photographer, you got to work out, well, what is the lowest hanging fruit? Let me be safe. I can photograph that person and perhaps state who they are and what they're doing or what the purpose is, and then I can go a little bit further. I think many of us, we decide whether we like a photograph of ourselves based upon how good we look first. Once we get over our vanity, now we basically say, all right, well, what emotion does it communicate? What is it basically saying about who we're, who we're trying to photograph? And that's the important thing. So what we're gonna cover in this four part series is not only the what and the how, but more importantly, the why I do what I do and why I choose a particular lens or why I approach a certain way. Certainly we're gonna cover all the gear that I use typically on a portrait shoot, what cameras, lenses, lighting equipment, all the accessories that really give me no excuse but to create a great photograph. In other words, if I do a bad job, it's actually me. It's not because I'm missing any kind of gear. So we'll cover that in absolute detail. Then what I'll do based upon who I'm photographing, I'm gonna articulate my thought process, how I choose my fashion, how I choose my approach, my lens choice, my cropping, my composition, and all those different things. And then if it is for a portrait, if it, let's say for example, it's a domestic portrait, well, how am I going to deliver those photographs? How am I gonna show them? How am I gonna sell them? And how am I gonna deliver them? And how do I present them to my client? Now to learn the art and craft of photography, I decided to photograph weddings. And I absolutely love weddings because I believe they're the best testing ground in any genre of photography, in my humble opinion, to learn the art and craft of photography. Why? Well, you're photographing normal people. You're photographing under time constraints, weather constraints. And really, what is a portrait? A portrait is a bride with a veil off. <laughs> and it could be on, it doesn't really matter how, how you define it. Uh, if, let's say for example, on a wedding day, you're photographing family, you're photographing groups, sisters, families, grandparents, sometimes newborns, and you're photographing detail, fashion, uh, and you're setting the scene, environmental portraiture, all these different things. So once you know how to photograph a wedding well, generally speaking, I find that most genres of photography, especially with people, are less intimidating. Now, as far as portraiture is concerned, for me, to get to the heart of a portrait, when I was younger, what I would normally do is, I wanna flatter you, I wanna make you look pretty, I wanna make you look handsome. And I think as you get a bit older, you want more purpose. And I find that it's really when you want to make it as a photographer, you just want to make it. Then you want to master and then you want to matter. And another way that I can put it is first, you just want to profit. You just want to get out there and make a living from doing it. And then you want purpose. And that's where I'm at in my life at the moment. So what tickles me when I'm photographing a portrait, what, what I get excited about is that moment when someone sees themselves in a different way, a mother could bring her daughter to me and say, I want you to show my daughter what I see. Because when a mother says, you're the most beautiful daughter in the world or the girl in the world, she's not gonna believe it. And mom, that's your job to say that. Now, if I can give that gift to that girl, not only of a beautiful photograph where she looks pretty, but I make her believe something in herself where he, she hasn't done that before. I show a side of herself that she hasn't seen before. That is what gets me out of bed in the morning and to get the reactions that I've gotten over the years. When someone is crying over your work, hopefully it's not bad, but if someone is crying about the emotional attachment, the connection that we're getting, getting from them, that's incredible. So my mandate, my 
elevator pitch is I simply want to bring out the best in people, whether it's photographing, whether it's teaching them, I want to bring out the best in the, in the person. My number one asset as a photographer is not my technical skill. It's not the lenses that I choose. It's not the gear that I use. It's my empathy. So if you're photographing people, you need to care about who you're photographing and why you're photographing them and why this is important to them. And that's the gift that keeps on giving. I think that what we, we do as photographers, we create something that outlives us. We have all these ideas. You have a subject, let's say for example, you have a girl and you have a room and you have a window, you have all these lights and all this gear. Well, where do I begin? Because you've got a thousand ways of approaching it. So what I believe is that creatives aren't short of ideas. The problem is committing to one of them and pretending that no other idea exists or matters right now, and then give yourself a little bit of room to breathe, a bit of spontaneity. So you go in there with a bit of a plan. Personally, that's what I do. I go in there with a bit of a starting point, but that could change dramatically because that girl with that light, with that makeup and that dress, in this mood, and as I get to know her, things could change dramatically. So with regards to gear, I'm not that geeky kind of a guy. That being said, I never want gear to be the, the reason why I didn't achieve a particular portrait or a particular look that I wanted. I'm, I care more about the people than the gear. Now don't get me wrong, the gear is amazing, but it's a tool. Now, what tools are they and how have I evolved over the years? I find for me, I mean, I've got a very, very bad back. That's why I'm leaning on this for, for the moment. And people ask me, what advice would you give me um, at the start of my career? I said, do yoga every day and stretch for your whole career <laughs> and you'll have a lot more longevity. But either way, as far as the gear is concerned, I look at the kind of uh, genre that I'm doing, what kind of cameras and lenses are, is going to be working for me. I need a combination of continuous light, I need a combination of uh, speed lights, strobes, modifiers. Am I shooting on location? Am I shooting in the studio? Can I travel with this easily? So there's going to be different solutions to all these problems that we basically have to solve. But gear should never be the reason why you don't achieve what you want to achieve. Now you might say, well, Jerry, it's fine for you. You're in a studio, you're surrounded by gear. What did you do when you started in photography? The fact is that you do what you can. Now, I actually, our family lost our home to the recession. And I remember being 18 or 19 years of age and uh, the gas turned off, electricity turned off, water turned off, locks got changed. I had to break into my house to rescue my parents' belongings. And then all of a sudden I'm in this world of photography and I really had nothing. So I rented the, the, the back of my brother's charcoal chicken to go food store for a hundred bucks a week. And that's how I began. In fact, my first camera was a Mamiya RB67. There was three actions to photograph one single picture. You would cock the shutter, cock the mirror, and you'd wind the film. Now these days, my camera of choice is the Nikon Z9. I was very proud to be part of the Z9 campaign. Cameras have made it so easy to get a great photograph, as in it's an incredible oven, but it still needs a chef. So for me, gear is, is really gear on the day should be unnoticed. I think of it like a, frame, a framed photograph. You're there to look at the photograph, not the frame. So on the day, especially to the talent, it's really about connecting emotionally. So if your heart and soul and mind and brain can actually, in the lens, be the extension of what's in here, it should be effortless. That's what it's all about for me. So like I said, I have lots of gear and I have countless modifiers and they're there to help me produce the results that I want to achieve, but they don't take over the shoot. They're just a tool. You know, I'm, it's not like Roger Federer and Nadal sit back there and say, hey, what tennis racket do you use? What, what strings do you use? So let the gear never be an issue and, and don't get caught up and swept up in the, the latest thing. Basically, if you need it, that's the most important thing. So now that we've got to know each other a little bit, I want to remind you about what we're trying to achieve in the next few episodes of this Portrait b &H series. Well, we're going to talk about gear. We're going to talk about what approach I will take with gear. Our model journey, she's got this beautiful, natural, gorgeous vibe about her. And I thought it'd be fun to actually explore some different sides to her. So later today, we're going to discuss and photograph journey in a way that gives us an idea of different ways that I'll be shooting so that you know that when I'm approaching a paid client, this is the kind of thing that I will exactly do. You'll be seeing exactly what's in my camera, the decisions that I make, how I crop, 
and I'll be discussing and articulating my thought process as I go ahead and photograph. Now, once I do the shoot, I'm gonna reveal the photographs. We're gonna show all the photographs and rather than perhaps give you a Photoshop tutorial like many other photographers will, I'm gonna perhaps show you how I prepare a sales process to give you an idea of how am I gonna approach this for a sale? How am I gonna uh, position it in a way where I can say, well, here's an album that I'm pitching or here's some wall art that I'm pitching and then that becomes more fruitful. So stay tuned, we're gonna have lots of fun and we're gonna go through all these different steps into a great portrait, done well with beautiful gear, and it becomes effortless to a point where you can now present it and sell it to your client.